Hi everyone, it's Mary Bardache with Beauty Science 101 Skincare and Grunge Factory Cosmetics. Today I want to talk about skincare and mention the 500 Dalton of molecular weight and also why retinol and vitamin C really shouldn't be used together and why that is. Uh, but first I want to start with, I got a couple comments that uh, mostly all great, but um, concerning my forehead. I have a very high forehead, I do, and I'm very proud of my forehead, actually. And I looked up videos on people and their views of their foreheads, and there are people actually having surgery to lower their hairline because of social pressure. People's features are unique and distinguished to them, to each person, and they're valuable. And for an example, I was thinking of a um, wonderful actress who was in, uh, I believe it was Dirty Dancing, and she had her nose fixed. And she's a wonderful actress, beautiful, and she was known for the way that her face looked. And it really ruined her career uh, changing it, which is unfortunate. That shouldn't happen because of her nose, but it did because it was a unique look. So I feel like I've even seen, I, when I looked on the internet, there were people with not even high foreheads. I mean, they would be like here and they wanted to, well, maybe here and they wanted to lower them to here. So I, I this is terrible, terrible trend. And I'm going to say this and it's not going to be popular and I don't care what you guys, if you don't like it, if you say bad things, I don't care because this is true. Uh, if you have... If you want a big, huge rear end and you make that fashionable and people go through a lot of trouble to make themselves basically deformed, basically they are, you're like deformed to make your body like that. Or if your breasts are ginormous or if anything like that, uh, to make that fashionable and then to, if society, whether it's imagery and models or whatever it is that makes you think that, that a feature of your face is not okay or not attractive, uh, that's not true, and you, no one should listen to it. If you have a forehead that's too low, that's that's a whole different thing. And you can make that look pretty. It depends how you wear your hair or just have confidence. Uh, like I said, beauty does originate on the inside. So I, I wanted to address that for sure. I uh, wore bangs uh, a lot in my life because I was self-conscious when I was younger. And I, I don't like to have hair in my face. I don't like it. I like to I like to pull my hair back. I feel better about it. Uh, I also want to add for those of you that do have higher than, I don't know why they're calling it the five finger thing, but, if you, but um, if you have a high forehead, I just want you to know the history of high foreheads actually is connected to aristocracy, which is, and I'm not tooting my own horn, but I mean, I have a high forehead. This isn't, I'm not saying it because of me. I'm really sharing this for other people out there that are going through surgery, cutting their scalp across and pulling their hair. That's insane. I don't, I don't know. I don't know why. Don't do that. Just don't do that because in about 10 years, high foreheads will be in or just something else will be in and people are, people are changing their faces to look like Barbie dolls and everybody looks alike and now it's not even special. It, everybody looks alike. So uh, I wanted to mention the aristocracy that back uh, Queen Elizabeth and before uh, Queen Elizabeth I and before and in the Renaissance time, women actually in aristocracy, p women with money, uh, would pluck their hair off to have a high forehead, and they even took off their eyebrows. Uh, they thought that it made them look like a baby, which was attractive. Um, there was a whole um, theory behind the look. Uh, many, many of the Renaissance art, the portraits, have that, where the very, very light eyebrows and high foreheads. So it comes, <laughs> ebbs and flows, right? It comes and goes, and you cannot chop up your body according to whatever society is pushing. So I am not going to be bullied, I, and I also am not going to wear makeup. I don't want to wear powder. Uh, you're not the first person or last person who's going to tell me to powder my forehead. Uh, my mother tells me plenty, so believe me, you just get in line. But I don't like stuff on my skin. I don't like the feel of it. I feel like it's clogging my pores. It does, actually. It actually does clog my pores. Um, it's fine if you want to wear powder, you want to wear foundation, you want to put makeup on that changes what you look like, you know, you have the freedom to do that. I'm just sad if you feel that you need to do that to be pretty, and I'm really pushing against that. I don't, I don't like it. I don't think it's right. I think there's a lot of psychology damaging things going on in our society uh, toward women, 
you know, and men. Men are doing that to their forehead as well. It's a sign of intelligence, high forehead. It's a sign of aristocracy. It's attractive. It's it it just is. And if you look at for men, most successful actors have high foreheads or. Uh, Anyway, that's my take on it. So if you don't like my forehead, don't watch my videos. Just don't do it. I might wear my bangs sometimes, and and it looks pretty. It's a different look. It's not as strong a look. I don't feel as smart. I mean, not. I mean, for me, because I'm petite, uh, rocking bangs is is okay. But it's a different feel and look for me. But I will do that in a video, and you can see. But uh, like I said, if you don't like my forehead don't you don't need to comment about it just move on move on to something else why you would watch to the very end just to say something is uh, interesting but anyway that's okay you're welcome to watch my channel but please keep your comments kind and I don't care if you like the way I look or not um, my channel is not about my looks I'm not a model I'm not an actress I, I have a skincare line because I uh, believe in it and I'm using myself because I am an older woman that uses my products and I have great skin and I'm not hiring a 20 year old to sell anti-aging products I think that's deceptive and I don't get it uh, I guess women or people think that you're gonna look like a 20 year old if you use those products and that's or people that have thick gorgeous hair selling hair growth or hair you know beautiful hair shampoo products no show me someone with bad hair do the hair products and then show me that it looks better that's what I want to see in marketing but for me I'm marketing I'm doing I'm a very private person I'm making these videos because I believe in my skincare line and there are a lot of them out there there's a lot I started in 2018 wasn't as, as aggressive as I should have been um, I'm also uh, I'm an author as well I do different things but I really believe in my skincare it really works I mean this is my skin. Again, I, I try to keep it. I, I, I wanted to show you a couple of the products. So we're going to talk about the retinol. I have a retinol product here that is amazing. And I'm going to talk about what retinol does for you. This is the, the product. I don't know if I can get a good. So it shows backwards, doesn't it? Um, and my DMAE plus C and then my ATP is a peptide serum. I use four of my six serums every day. And I use my moisturizers and my sunscreen. And I do not, like I said, wear foundation and powder on my skin. I don't like it. Uh, I do wear, uh, I'm not wearing lipstick today because I'm talking about my skincare. But like I said, I do the eyebrow. I do, um, right now I have a little bit of eyeshadow on because it's part of my palette that's coming out. And I'm kind of playing with those. And I really, really love the colors that are coming out in my, the Grunge Factory uh, Premier Palette um, will be out this summer. But anyway, I wanted to talk to you. Um, First, to, for the foundation, this will be one of like three, well, really four. There's, I was as I was doing it, I wanted to do one on inflammation because inflammation is a huge <clears throat> factor in aging. And uh, when I sell, I sell on Amazon, as well as my own website. They don't let you talk about uh, inflammation, anything medical. They 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 flag you. They take your product down. So I really can't talk about that. Um, on Amazon if you go there to buy my products but that is really the main thing that ages the skin is inflammation and so what causes inflammation of course free radicals and um, the aging process and different things foods what you eat uh, so we'll talk about that in another um, video but so the first thing I want to tell you after we covered the whole forehead thing is that um, it's called 500 Dalton and that is a scientific measurement for molecules and so I just I you know, I was going to do it where I had it where I read it off the screen, but I did not do that. Um, so it's a unit of mass equal to a twelfth of the mass of a free carbon, free free carbon twelve atom at rest. So that's a, it's a little scientific. So just to um, make it more simple, a, a Dalton is a unit of mass expressing molecular weight of atoms, molecules, and nuclear particles. So th it's the five hundred Dalton rule when you create skincare. And I wanted just to, for you all to be educated on that. They don't talk about it a lot, um, the people that sell skincare or on the packaging or anything like that. But it is incredibly important. And the the smaller the molecule, actually, the more expensive the product I have found is. Now, someone may come and say, oh, it's not true. It is true for me. For creating my products, the more sp the the more specific I got about what ingredients I was going to include in my serums and and facial creams, the purer it, the more pure, sorry, the stronger and the molecular weight being low, 
made it more expensive for me, much more expensive. So that is why it's important that the molecular weight be appropriate to penetrate the skin. So it has to be under 500 on that scale to penetrate the skin to get to where the damage is. I mean, you can have skin damage on the surface, but you also leave, also have it deep in on the layers uh, deep, and that's really where uh, all the damage occurs with aging. So you want those serums to go down deep. The other thing that's really important is uh, the pH of a product. So there's um, acidity and there's alkali or uh, basicity. Basicity is just like the scale is from 1 to 14 for acidity, 1 to 14. 7 being neutral, which water is 7. So human skin is, let's see, so below 7 is acidic and above 7 is alkaline. That is not. So I wanted to tell you that um, healthy skin is between 4.5 and 5.5 on the scale. So that's where you really want your skin to be. And um, if it gets... If you, so, so soap is nine. Uh, the example of soap is usually having a pH of nine, and is why it's important to use a moisturizer afterwards to get that pH balance, uh, back in balance on your skin. So when, your pH, when the pH is off on your skin, uh, you can get bacteria and fungi, fungus, and that leads to blemishes and problems with your skin. So that, it's very important that you keep it at that 4.5, 5.5 uh, acidity level in your skin. Okay, so when you wash your face, it's going to be more alkaline. You're taking acid off of your skin. But bacteria and fungi don't like acid, and so when you take it away, it, it allows it to grow and spread, and uh, it just promotes an environment that, that bacteria and fungus like. So you want to make sure that you get your skin back to a balance of the 4.5, 5.5. Really, under 5 is good. It's so like around 5, 4.5 uh, is where you want to be. Um, I, my products have, make it so that your skin is perfect balance, pH balance. It also has a molecular weight that's appropriate for each ingredient in, in the serums and, and moisturizers. So, um, so diet and exercise affect the pH of your skin, and we'll talk about that in another video. Just like inflammation, it's a whole topic, so I will cover it in, in a different video. But to move on to retinol and vitamin C. So the reason you don't put those together is that they have different acidities they present in a different acidity and you cannot combine those together so retinol is the active ingredient is uh, retino re retinoic acid and uh, it has a ph of five to six and retinol is responsible for cellular turnover and boosting collagen production by stimulating fibroblasts to synthesize collagen fibers uh, it also uh, shown to unclog pores and to exfoliate skin and to improve skin elasticity by removing degenerated elastin fibers and promoting new fiber growth. So retinol is an amazing it's, uh, vitamin A, and it's, it's an amazing ingredient in serums and uh, in the skin care, really. So to move on to vitamin C, it has a pH of 2 to 3.5, so it's different. It, uh, it absorbs very well. Uh, vitamin C boosts collagen production by stimulating the biosynthesis of collagen. And the main cutaneous collagens are type 1 and type 3. So those slow down as you age. But vitamin C is a main promoter of collagen formation. So it's a very important ingredient to use every day in your skincare regime. Coll vitamin C also promotes even skin tone by impeding melanin. Melanin is what adds color to your skin and protects, against, protects the cells against free radicals from the environment and from UV light from the sun. You can have in a skincare product is Kakadu Plum. Uh, it's in all my serums except for one. I don't have it in the retinol serum because vitamin C and retinol don't go together. But you can also eat these. A lot of the ingredients in my products are edible. They're in different forms, in a powder form, in a different um, concentration. Uh, and it's produced differently, so it's edible. But uh, like Tremella, I have a Tremella serum that produces collagen in the skin, promotes it, and that's something that's edible, not my serum, but you can purchase Tremella and, and have that added to your foods, uh, just like you can for the Kakadu Plum. Uh, again, I wanted to say that for Beauty Science 101 skincare, the molecular weight is proper for all the ingredients, whether it's the serum or the facial creams, and um, we don't mix retinol and vitamin C because they cancel each other out. 
Now, you have to have the same pH. When you have one that needs uh, a two point, you know, two to three, and another one's a four to five, and you combine them at the same time, they cancel each other out. So you can put one on first and wait a few minutes till it absorbs in. That's what I do. I keep my skin, um, I am outside <laughs> a lot. I love to garden, um, but I use the Kojic Acid Alfie Arbertine Lily White skin lightening serum that um, I use every night. I use that. I wait a few minutes when it absorbs in and then I use my retinol. And in the morning I use my DMAE plus C and then the uh, peptide serum, ATP peptide serum. And then of course my moisturizers. But I did want to share with you that uh, you cannot use them. You should not use them if you want them to be effective. Do not use vitamin C and retinol together because they because of the the acid that they need to exist within that balance that ph level they cannot be together at one time you cannot combine them right away or have them in one product and i do see uh, them sold uh, in the market public market for uh you know in, in product serums expensive serums where they're combined retinol and vitamin c and i think that they're just uh, popular terms that people want and they figure well I can just do the popular retinol and the popular vitamin C together and it just you know takes care of it in one serum and do not combine those and there's been a lot of studies and uh, conversation about whether you actually can use them together and I from what I have learned and studied and researched you cannot the, the acidity is very important just like the balance of your skin is not healthy without it being proper. So, and that's another thing I want to cover is how diet affects um, not only how you feel uh, and how you perform, but how you, your skin looks. It's it's and and how your pH is. And and if the pH is off, then your skin is not going to be healthy and not going to um, be shiny. Not going to be. It, 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 you can get rid of blemishes by getting your pH corrected. So um, anyway, I think that covers. A lot and um, so it's a little choppy I think um, I'm gonna be probably using a different camera I think that this one warps me it's my computer lens and not good I have a good camera but um, I try to film these on my own on my own time and probably should make it more professional so I'll work on that but um, I did want to share with you and I appreciate all of you viewing my videos and um, Everyone just be happy, be proud of the way you look and accentuate the positive. Whatever feature you have that's really amazing, just accentuate it. And confidence is very attractive. It really is. So for men and for women. So just have confidence in who you are and how you look. And, you know, God made you and he made you perfect. So just go with that. Um, anyway, well, thanks for spending this time with me. And I will talk to you all soon. Thanks. Bye.